Hello and welcome to Tech Deals $300 budget build featuring the AMD Athlon 200GE 2 core 4 thread processor with Vega 3 graphics. Yes, this is really a $300 build, or it can be depending upon your choice of components. I have a couple of slightly different options here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But you can build this today for $300, including case, motherboard, power supply, CPU, eight gigs of RAM, either an SSD or a hard drive, and you've got yourself a very capable Windows PC, email, spreadsheets, web browsing, watching videos, editing images, not really editing videos, playing games, the Vega 3 graphics far superior, well, reasonably far superior to Intel's integrated graphics at this level. For about $350, you can buy an Acer Aspire desktop computer about this size with an i3-8100. That CPU is actually more powerful than this is. That CPU is a true four-core chip. This is a two-core four thread chip, so it's not as fast, but it has better integrated graphics. The Intel HD graphics built into an i3-8100, they display Windows, they run League of Legends. That's kind of about it. I mean, they'll do other things too, but this is better. But there's another reason to consider doing this besides just going and buying an Acer Aspire for 350 and skipping all this. Future upgradability standard mini tower case that will accept a full-size ATX motherboard, an AM4 socketed motherboard that will accept future CPUs, either APUs or full CPUs. Want to upgrade to a six-core chip? Want to upgrade to, a, to an eight-core chip at some point in the future? Add a graphics card? I budgeted a 500 watt power supply in this build. Yes, for $300, there is room and it's a Seasonic unit. This is a Cooler Master, but in the parts list down in the video description below, it's a Seasonic 80 plus power supply, 500 watts. It's $35 at the time I filmed this video. All the parts here to build that $300 build will be linked to Amazon and Newegg down in the description below, as well as some optional upgrades. But the fact that you can add an RX 580 or maybe the new Navi cards coming out later this year, the fact that you can put an RTX 2060 on this power supply, on a board like this, a B450, in a case like this, you're starting with a $300 build and you can slowly work your way up from there. And that's an interesting option. Now to be sure, if you're getting a computer for your brother, sister, cousin, aunt, uncle, Mary Sue, whoever, and they just need to browse the web, check their email, watch YouTube videos, and they're not using their smartphone to do it. Okay, fine. Go buy the $350 Acer Aspire. It works out of the box. It comes with keyboard, mouse, Wi-Fi adapter, Windows is already installed. Plug it in, turn it on, and you're ready to go. But if you enjoy building a computer, and if you want the future upgradability options, this is an interesting choice. Now, I mentioned at the start of this video that the component choices for a $300 build are slightly different than what's on the desk. Part of the reason for that is I don't have all of those components physically present to build the machine. I can go online, pick out the parts and show them to you, and I'll put down here on the screen some of those part pages as we go through it. But I kind of have to take what's on the shelf when I put the machine together, so optional upgrades. Now, the power supply here is a very nice Cooler Master Master Watt Light 500 Watt power supply, 80 plus rated, just like the Seasonic link down below. It's a little bit more expensive. It's $5 more after mail-in rebate than the Seasonic. It depends upon when you watch this video as to which option is the least expensive. That's why I'm going to link both down there below. Likewise, the motherboard. This B450 Tomahawk is a very nice full-featured board. It is not going to fit in the $300R budget, but it was on the shelf, so we're building with it. Now, before you say, wait a minute, why would you do that? Consider this. If you really do want to upgrade to a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 CPU in the future, if you're thinking, I'm on a tight budget now, but I want to upgrade my machine, I want to leave myself room to upgrade. If you've got a few extra dollars, maybe 20, maybe $30, buy yourself a better motherboard, better power delivery, better future upgradability for higher end chips. It's the one component that's really hard to change. Your Windows license ends up tied to it. Link to cheap Windows licenses down in the video description below. But your Windows license is tied to it, your Windows install is tied to it, and it's the thing that everything is plugged into in your machine. So if you're going to spend some money, maybe buy a better motherboard, give yourself some future upgradability. But I'll link to a couple of motherboard choices down there. 
CPU. This thing is $59, but it is not, even though it's called an Athlon, it is not the same as the old Athlon X chips that they used to sell. And in fact, they have an Athlon X950, which fits in the AM4 socket, but that's the old bulldozer slash excavator cores. You don't want one of those. This is the new Zen cores. It's only two of them, but it is hyper-threaded, SMT actually, and it does have Vega 3 graphics. Now, it's actually sitting on a Ryzen 3 2200G box, and that brings up an interesting question. For $40 more, is it smarter to buy a Ryzen 3 2200G instead of the Athlon? That depends upon your budget. Spend more, get more. It, that's universally true across everything you can do with a build. Spend a bit more money, get a bit more capability. Four true processing cores, Vega 8 graphics, dramatically better performance. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see game benchmarks between the Vega 3 graphics on the Athlon 200GE and the Vega 8 graphics on the Ryzen 3 2200G. If I get enough requests down there, I might very well make a benchmark video. System RAM. Now this is actually 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't have an eight gigabyte kit on the shelf. I do in another machine, and when I do benchmarks on this, I'll swap this memory kit out and I'll put eight gigabytes of RAM in the machine. If you're going for this kind of CPU, as much as I love to say, 16 gigabytes is the future. Always build with 16 gigs. If you've watched my other videos, you've heard me say that many times. Not this time. If you're buying a $59 CPU, eight gigs of RAM is where it's at. I wouldn't do four. Windows 10 really doesn't want to run on four. So eight gigs is where it's at. Right now, 50 to $60 will get you eight gigabytes of DDR4 2666 or 3000, depending upon prices. I'll link to those down below. You always have the option of upgrading to 16 gigs or more in the future. And that is a benefit of buying a slightly nicer board. This has four memory slots. So if you put in two four gigabyte modules right now to get eight gigs of RAM, you can put in two more four to get 16, or you can put in two eights in the future and have 24 gigs of RAM while still maintaining the dual channel, which is really, really nice. So this here is 16 gigs of DDR4-3000, but the system is spec priced and linked down below to eight gigs, because as I said, I just didn't have it on the shelf. 128 gigabyte solid state drive. This is an SU800 A data drive. It is an M.2, but it's a SATA. It's not an NVMe. These things are $20. There is no reason in 2019 not to have a boot SSD in one of these, even at $300. I gen even though I've come back and said eight gigs of RAM, SSD, $20 gets you a boot SSD. It makes your computer an entirely new experience. If you've never used an SSD, you don't know what you're missing. I completely understand budgets are tight. Many of you are gonna say, well, I'll just go with a hard drive. Fair enough, it's your computer. Build it custom PCs or custom, you build it your way. Me personally, if I was on a very, very tight budget, I would look for a used hard drive for games and data. You can find 500 gig drives for $10, $20 on Craigslist or eBay. And then I'd spend 20 bucks on a boot SSD because the performance is worth it. It makes your machine snappy and responsive and just a much, much, much bigger pleasure to use. You can always add more SSD space. You can always add more hard drive space, either internally or externally. Just plug in an external USB drive if you need more room for your Steam library in the future. But I would definitely go with an SSD. It doesn't have to be an M.2. This case does have room for a standard two and a half inch SATA drive, but an M.2 is so much easier to install. It just screws on the motherboard, no power cables, no muss, no fuss. Now cases, there's a wide variety of cases that you can choose from. This is a $40 case, and yes, this $40 case fits into that $300 budget. That's not a substitution. You can buy cheaper cases and save some money to put somewhere else. But I've used $20 cases. I've used $30 cases, and they're really cheap. They have exposed metal edges inside. They have exposed metal. They're not, uh, they're not uh, black painted inside. This is actually a quality case. This is the Masterbox 600 Lite from Cooler Master, currently $39 after mail-in rebate on Newegg when I'm filming this video. Prices vary, but I'll put a couple links to some substitute cases down below. Similar price points, they change all the time. Discounts and rebates change, so check those out. 
A Corsair Spec Series is a similar size. They're Spec 01, 2, 3, and 4. They're just different front panel designs and accessory designs, but they're all basically the same case inside. There's several other cases from Corsair, Cooler Master, and a few other companies that are much nicer to build with inside, have much nicer accessories, mounting points for SSDs for 10 or 20 bucks more than the super cheap cases. Totally worth it in my opinion. So that's been the parts overview of the $300 Athlon 200 GE build. There's going to be at least two more videos on this computer, besides a benchmark video at the end where I will test this and see how well those Vega 3 graphics. Again, let me know down in the comments below whether or not you want to see comparisons to any other CPUs or graphics cards, otherwise I'll do them standalone. But there will be one more video on this, which is the build video. I've got the overhead camera, which you recently saw in the RTX 2060 unboxing video, where I had that up in the corner. My goal here is to build this computer with the camera on and the overhead at the same time, and actually put the main build full screen while having me down in the corner at various times and possibly featuring my lovely wife, Rogue, who, for those of you who follow her over on Twitch, her Twitch channel is linked down in the video description below. She streams Overwatch and World of Warships. But I may very well have her as a featured guest building this computer. So be sure to like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to this channel with the big, huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, ideas? Put that in the comment section below. Check the links in the video description. As I said, the $300 build for this will be linked first down in the description below. It's a split mix between Amazon and Newegg links down there. And then I will have alternative suggestions, some of the things that you see here, and some upgrades as well, such as the Ryzen 3 2200G true four core processor, which is $40 more. You know, as a side note, that's $40 more and it may not seem like much, but you can $40 yourself quite high. Add a little bit to this, add a little bit more RAM, add a little bit more storage, and pretty soon you built a $500 computer, which I've done on my channel. Be sure to check out my other videos as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time.